The keynoting tool in Revit allows you to create one central list for all the noting in your project. A central noting list helps prevent conflicting notes and conflicting verbiage from occurring. With the keynoting tool, you then tie the notes to specific components and walls in the model, which keeps the model coordinated as you update your list and change your model. This central keynoting list is saved in the form of a text file. If you're starting the project from an OPN template, you'll find a text file template in the project templates folder. Copy this text file into your current drawings folder and rename it as project name keynotes. Once you have the text file in the correct location, you need to point Revit to this file by browsing to it in the keynote settings. This is located under the annotate tab and under the keynote tool, pull down the tag, pull down window and then choose keynote settings. Here you can browse to the location of the text file and click open. The path type should be set to relative and the numbering method by keynote. So opening up this text file, you can see that there is a specific format to follow when adding keynotes to the list. The format we're using for OPN is to organize the keynotes by division, adding only keynotes you need to the specific project you're working on. You can see the first two keynotes of every division group are started out for you, so all you need to do is replace the keynote text. To add a third keynote text, notice how each division is organized. For example, under 08 openings, 08 openings is the header that's defining the group. The first keynote starts out with the keynote number, 08A. This is followed by a tab separating the keynote text. Then enter another tab and end it with the heading again. The heading has to be spelled exactly and it's case sensitive. By typing the heading at the end of a keynote line, you're telling Revit that this keynote is related to this division grouping. Also, you notice that subgroupings are set up in this format. Under the 05 metals grouping, you'll see that under the 05B steel angle keynote, there are related sub keynotes to this parent group. For 05 metals grouping, this is to relate different size angles to, to the steel angle, but you could also use subgroupings to relate um, similar casework types or different size um, window system openings. So to create your own subgrouping, for example, uh, if I want to relate a few window systems together, I'll start out with the parent keynote under 08 openings. I'll type in aluminum window system. Then at the end of the line, I'll create a new line. And this will be 08A.1. Tab. And this will be my 3x4 system. Tab. And then I'll end it with 08A, which is a keynote number of the, the, the parent keynote that this is related to. Hit enter, and then the second line can be 08A.2. And this can be another size system. Again, ending it with 08A because they're related to the 08A keynote. When the subgrouping is done, it just goes back to ending with the division grouping name, which tells Revit that. Um, the, the next keynote in the list is part of the larger group. I'll go ahead and finish adding some more notes. And when I'm done entering uh, the notes, save the file. and reload it back into the project. Revit will not automatically reload the Keynote's text file. Um, you'll have to manually reload it every time the text file changes. So under the tag pull down, I'll go to Keynote Settings and just browse and point to it again to reload it.
One important thing to keep in mind when modifying the text file is to make sure that two people are not in the file at the same time. If two people save over the file, it can corrupt it. So always designate a keeper of the keynote text file. So to place keynotes in the project, go to a view where you want to start noting. And then find the keynote tool under the annotate tab. And first I'll choose element keynote. Hovering over the model, click to place the keynote on the object that you want to note. Click again to place the tag, and this will open up the Keynotes window. And you can see that this list is generated directly from our Keynote text file. Expand the category, and you can see all the Keynotes that I've added. Go ahead and click to select it and click OK, and it adds it to the list, or excuse me, to the, to the project. You'll notice that once you've assigned the Keynote to an object, Every other object of the same type will be tied to that note as well. So if I go to place another keynote on this one, it automatically brings up the same keynote. Once you've placed a keynote, you have the option to display the note as a keynote number, or you can swap out the note style type for one that displays the full text note. To swap the style of the note, select it, and then change its type in the type selector in the properties window to one that gives you the different style. With the OPN template, you're also given the option to choose a center, left, or right justified tag type in the type selector. To change the leader arrow style, select the note and then go to its type properties by cl clicking on edit type in the properties window. And here you can change the leader arrow head out. Remember that when changing type properties, you're going to change all of the keynotes of the same type. So if you want to create a new style, click duplicate to create a new one. When choosing the Keynote tool, you'll see that you have the flexibility of using three different options for placing the Keynote. You can place it by element, by material, or by user. And the difference between these options has to do with what the tag is looking for when tying it to a component. If you choose to place a Keynote by element, it's looking at the family type name when you click on a component or wall. So every other component with the same type name will be tied to that note as well. If you choose to place a keynote by material, in this case, now the keynote is looking for what the material of the component is made of. So if I click on the same component, drag it out, you notice it's not yet defined. Coming in here, I'll go to my finishes and choose my aluminum note. So if the, if the keynote text in this case is describing a material, then you want to place a keynote by material instead of by element. This is because regardless of whether the object is a door or a window or a piece of casework or a wall panel, your note can be tied to all of these different objects just by sharing the same material. So you notice that now that the material aluminum has been tied to a keynote, Every, every other component in the project that's using that same material will automatically show up at that keynote. Finally, placing a keynote by user is the wildcard. This option allows you to place any keynote onto any component or wall. The advantage of this option is you can place as many different keynotes onto the same object as you want. In this case, I'll place my solid still note. Solid still note. The disadvantage is that this keynote is not looking at any family type name or any material type, so it doesn't update or coordinate if any of these change in the model. So avoid using this option unless it's appropriate. Finally, with the keynoting tool, Revit gives you the ability to create a keynoting legend, which automatically updates on a sheet depending on what keynotes are on that sheet. To create a new legend, first go to View, Legends, and then Keynote Legend. Give it a name or leave Keynote Legend as a default and type OK.
since we want this legend to filter by the sheet so that it populates only what keynotes are on that sheet, go to the filter tab and choose filter by sheet and click OK. The keynote legend window will appear showing all the keynotes that have appeared in the model. And if I go to a sheet where the view has been placed, I can drag the keynote legend onto the sheet and it will automatically populate with whatever keynotes are just on that sheet.